We're in a little bit of a rush as we were just about to head to Loughborough to go get our diesel heater fitted indoors. Finally! And we are here! Hi guys, we are Nick and Sam and this right here is Lord Onyx. We have been living and travelling in self-built camper vans since 2018 and between us we have converted four vans. For the past few series we have been vlogging our van life adventures which has taken us through Spain, Portugal, Scotland, Norway and Germany. But if you know anything about van life, a build is always calling. So this time around, Terra will be resting her wheels whilst we take on the challenge of building van number five. Welcome back guys, we're in a little bit of a rush as we were just about to head to Loughborough to go get our Diesel heater fitted indoors. Finally, it's yeah. just as it's turned cold as well. So, it's so cold. Timing. In a mad rush, so that we leave before rush hour. So fitting, isn't it? Um, we've got all the vans sorted. We're going down in both vans as um, we're going to be staying in our van overnight. And then we're supposed to be there at half eight in the morning. I was like, there ain't no way I'm getting up early to the drive down there. So yeah, we just thought we'll bring both vans. Hoping we've got everything ready. I've like triple checked the emails, you know. We went over everything yesterday, like plotting out the layout of where the diesel heat will go if not under the seat. So I'm just keeping my fingers crossed we don't forget anything. It's another reason also why I like bringing the van we live in because I know them we've got everything with us and the last thing we're doing is looking for all the chargers to charge up our power banks as we drive but I have no idea where I've put them <sighs> we're doing a last minute check in this van for it Are you seeing anything no, oh my god how can we lose it the vans are tiny right that's one down we can't find it for the other so we ain't got time for this let's get on the road bye bye Okay, first stop, getting some diesel. They have said that I need to make sure the tank is as light as it possibly can be for when I arrive, because they'll be dropping the tank to feed the diesel heater into it. So 20 quid, I think, an hour and a half drive will do. We'll find out. And we are here. Look who it is! Hello! It's been a whole hour and a half. I know, that's like the longest I've spent without you in ages. Was it, it was peaceful? horrible, yeah. Did you see all the <laughs> snow on the roofs? Yeah, I did actually. I saw so it you can tell it's getting snow cold and I was here. like, what? We're only more east, we're not more north, are we? Yeah, I know, I have no idea. It just seems to be colder in the middle of England. Anyway, um, <laughs> this guy's waiting. Yeah, Harvey over there is waiting for us to pull in, so let's pull in. There she goes. So we've dropped off Dork at the garage, we're feeling a little bit calmer, yep. so we thought we'd just explain to you what is happening. We've driven down the night before to HJ Specialists yeah. in Loughborough because we're getting an Eberspacher. Eberspacher. Yeah, Eberspacher. We were like, Eberspacher. how do you say it? Yeah. Diesel heater fitted. In dock. So we decided to come the night before because they wanted us to meet them at half Perfect. eight in the morning and Nico I don't even don't do mornings. I don't even normally get up to or out of bed until nine. So I was like, we'll come down the night before, we'll drop off the van and then we'll stay nearby and then meet you in the morning. Yep. So tomorrow we'll go over the heater, why we've chosen it and all that type of stuff with you, you know, where we're positioning it, um, and all of that stuff. So for now, good night. Tired boy. Are you ready to head over to the workshop? No. We've got a heater in here, we don't need another one. <laughs> so cold again. It was minus two last night. I know we've had worse the other week, but we just started to get used to the warmer climate and now it's cold again. So yeah, we've got the heater on, trying to warm up, and then we head there in about 10 minutes, uh, just like five minutes down the road. So We're getting the heater installed in Dork. Oh, wow. Our front windscreen's completely frozen over as well. How long have we got? About 10 minutes. So you best get in the front and unfreeze it while I pack up the back of the van. <laughs> oh wow, it is fair. Everyone's gone but us. You've left the side door open. Sorry. The heat is on, side door's open. Come on. I know it's early. What is this? What is this? 
got about a minute until we need to leave so I thought I'd quickly show you where we parked up last night. So we are just on a lay-by about 20 meters away from the main road over there. It actually was not loud at all yesterday. We had a bunch of lorries with us too. All super quiet, didn't even hear them go. Anyway, it's too cold to be out here, so off to the garage we go. There's ice all on the ground. I'm supposed to be there by now. <laughs> I love mornings! Liar. <laughs> I'm manifesting to love mornings. They're just so cold and miserable. It's literally the first one that we woke up where it's this cold. It is so cold. Let me know in the comments if you like mornings or if you prefer the evenings. Like moi! All my energy usually comes in the evening. So I don't know why I'm buzzing this morning. I know why I'm buzzing. Because I'm getting the heater! <sighs> Right, we're here. Doesn't even look like many others are here in the industrial estate yet. All the doors are shut. This is early. So we're now at the workshop. It's all hands on deck. Yeah. We're just trying to decide where the heat is gonna go because unfortunately, yeah, hello everyone. <laughs> unfortunately, where I wanted it to go, there's some stuff underneath the van, so we need to shift it. So I'm gonna show you where we're having the heater instead. So the diesel here, you know I wanted it under the seat, but unfortunately it will ruin the structure of the van. So the second option was to have it um, here or here. However, Kevin has advised against that. So we are now gonna have it in the corner. Okay, yeah, so Nick um, actually wanted it here, but what we found underneath, we've got a structural member underneath the van, so yeah. we can't drill within 30 centimeters Boom. of that. So what we're <laughs> gonna do for them is we're gonna put it in the corner here nicely. Uh, that way it's nice and tucked in, nice and um, sort of neatly in the corner, and it isn't yeah. taken away from any of the integrity of the van. So yeah. I think it's gonna be a good compromise. And to be fair, I think it's actually in a better position. I just didn't think of it, there's so many options. So as you know, the gas locker was going here as well, so that's just gonna shift over. So I think we're ready to start getting yeah, the heater so, yeah. in. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Come on boys, chop chop. That's what, that's what I usually get told. <laughs> So let's tell you more about the heater we've gone for. Eberspecker has a huge range of space heaters and we went with the Airtronic 2 kilowatt 12 volt kit. You can find the link to it in the description below. We went for this heater because it's super compact and easy to use, but most importantly, it's programmable. As in, you can set the times your heater comes on by the Easy Start Pro monitor. And if you combine it with the Easy Start web app, you can control it from your phone from any distance. So if you've been on a hike and want to return to a warm van, log into the app and turn it on. As this van is a rental, having these settings means we can manage the heating when it's not in use whilst we are away. It really is an incredible heater. We're now a third of the way through of getting the heater fitted and they've dropped our diesel tank. So this is gonna be the only time you're gonna be able to see under the van really. So let's take a look. This is where it was. It's been pulled out. There were loads of rusty bolts and stuff. So they've had to put some elbow grease into this. Yeah, it is an old van after all. And then they've got the intake pipe. So this pulls in the air, this one, this black one, and the outtake pipe fitted. It still needs to be cut back and fixed properly. So we'll show it you all at the end, but yeah. Two more thirds to go. The guys now have put the, uh, the fuel connection in and it's a fuel spigot that goes down to the bottom of the tank. And it runs to about 20 mil off the bottom of the tank mm -hmm. so the heater can run out of fuel before the, the engine of the vehicle does. Right, go. Yeah. Okay, so the tank is now ready to go back in the vehicle. It is possible to have a separate diesel tank for your heater, however we had that set up in our old van, LL, and changed it to tap into the fuel tank as it was more convenient. You can also get these heaters installed under slung, however our van wasn't high enough to accommodate that. Here you will see they've added a silencer to reduce the noise, and a little hole in so the pipes can't flood. It's time to test it out. It's just priming, but we can start to feel the heat coming through now. Yay! All in all, really good fit from HJ's. <laughs> um, very impressed with it. Underneath, really good. Very good. Is it lovely uh, jubbly? It is. It's lovely, <laughs> it's lovely jubbly. <laughs> So 
So that is the end of the Eversbacher diesel heater installation. Yeah, we had absolutely brilliant service from the yeah. guys here. They were so good. I feel like we made friends for life. <laughs> <laughs> they may not think that, but we do. I do. I wanted to give them a hug when we left, but we just did handshakes and I was like, oh. Too professional, but yeah, I think really, next really up happy. for us is doing the reversing camera. Yeah, so meet you at the back of the van. Righty then, looks like I'm going to be installing a reversing camera in the van. The one that we're going to be using is this Autobox. I think it's about £55 on Amazon, I'll drop the link in the description below. We actually use this in Terra so we know that it works for our needs already. This is not a wireless one so you have to run the wire all the way to the front into the cab to get a connection. If you guys haven't done an install before, stick with me, I'll try and make this as simple as possible. So for tools. You're going to need a multimeter, this is going to help us detect which wire is giving power to the reversing lights. And then once we've spliced the cable, we're going to be connecting them up using these little Wago connectors. If you haven't seen these before, they're absolutely brilliant, how they make splicing wires together so much easier. Then we're going to get a small O-ring terminal, crimp it onto the end of our black cable, which is going to be our earth, and then just scrape off a bit of the paint so then we can screw it into the chassis. First things first. Let's get that light off. So we've got our cables exposed here. Yours may or may not look like this. You might already have just two cables going straight to the light itself. Whereas for this one, what we're going to have to do is put the van in reverse, get your black cable put it on a bolt or a bit of exposed metal on the van set your multimeter to 20 V because we want to be measuring 12 volt system and then when you've got your black node touching some metal on the van you're going to get your red pin and then you're going to have to be going through each of the little connectors to see which one is giving you a 12 volt reading once you've got one that is giving you a 12 volt reading knock it out of reverse see if the numbers drop and then put it back in to make sure once we've got all that we're then going to have to do a continuity test which is basically going to be showing that we've got a full loop and electricity is flowing all right i'm pretty happy that i found the correct wire i've taken it out of reverse put it back in reverse done multiple tests to ensure that i've got the right one and now is the fun part, we get to use this little Wago clip, so I'm going to cut the wire and then literally push both ends of the purple wire into the Wago and then add the positive from our reversing camera. Make sure that you're not cutting the wire right at the end of the connector, you still want to give it some length, so I'm going to put it right here. Okay, let's do a little recap. We've ran all the wires where they need to be. We've put them into the little Wago block. I've grounded the black cable. All that's left to do now is run the cable to the front. Before we do that, I think we should give it a test, see if it actually works or not. Yay! Great, so it looks like it's all working. The last thing I forgot to mention is I need to run the actual camera out onto the number plate itself. Let's get that done for tonight. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run the cable through this conduit, which I presume is housing cable for the brake light on the back of the door. And then I'll run it down through the bottom and then I'll mount the reversing camera about here. Yes. That has taken me so long to get that through. I've had to, I went through fishing wire. I had to get a coat hanger. Fortunately, the coat hanger worked. It's nice and rigid to work it through, but the bends in this pipe were just so tight. But finally it's through. <sighs> Looks like it's all working perfectly, which is brilliant news. It is really cold out here and super dark. So I'm gonna pack it all up Tomorrow, I'm gonna to finish it off. All I need to do is just feed the cable into the cab area where the monitor is gonna sit. And I think that's a uh, job well done if I uh, do say so myself. So, uh, catch you tomorrow. 
final thing that I've got to do is just run the cable from the front to the back. I'm going to be running it along this channel here and then just mount it on the windscreen. The best bit of advice I can give you if you've already started to progress your build a little bit is get a wire coat hanger. And that is the reversing camera complete. Look at what I've just found. Parking centers. So these were actually intended for our Terra van build, but we just never got around to install them. I think they're about 20 pound or something on Amazon. I'll drop the link here. We've already got the backlight off. These will be a pretty straightforward install because we've already got the wires all exposed for doing the reversing camera. So just need to splice the power cable in for the parking sensors and find somewhere to house it. So what I've done with the cables for the reversing camera, still in this little Wago block, I've now spliced in a new Wago block into the reversing parking light, which gives us this little power cable, which all we need to do is connect into our little system here, and then all we need to do is install the parking sensors. And it is grounded here with the same of the reversing camera. You need to make sure that they're installed at a 90 degree angle. They can't be facing up or facing down, they need to be 90 degree to the road. See, 90 degrees, told you. Okay, I've marked off all the points of where I wanna place the little sensors, and now you get a free little drill bit with it, with the order that you get on Amazon. So I'm gonna cut these out and feed the wires through. I'm going to get the bumper off just so I can drill the holes and make sure there's nothing behind where I've put the marks that's going to stop the cables running down. So it's a good thing we're popping these sensors in because if we didn't take these bumpers off we wouldn't have come across this little bit of rust here on the bodywork. Fortunately it's only small so we're just going to wire brush it down, hammer it and then pop the bumpers back on. Oh, we found living on the van. Oh, a spider's nest! Bye bye! So, we're just going to drill a hole here so we can feed the wire through from the corner bumper sensor. Right, this has actually been a pig's ear to get in. I'm struggling a little bit. There's just not enough depth inside this plastic casing for me to run the cables on the inside like I wanted to because the connectors for the sensors themselves they have a little housing as well. So, I've had to run the cables underneath and hopefully that will kind of sort the situation out. I just did not think it was going to take this long at all. It's taken me at least two hours just to wire these up and drill the holes, which is just too long, in my opinion. <laughs> and now I think we need to uh, give it a test. So if you'd like to jump in the front yes, and boss. reverse over me. <laughs> <laughs> yes, boss. Are you ready? Yes. Boom, reverse, let's go. I'm going to say they're all working, so good job. Wow, way, you happy? I am so happy, really chuffed with everything. So we're going to call that a wrap on today's vlog and we'll catch you next week. Ciao.